So I really want to express my gratitude for to all of you that you want to spend your time and your energy to this coming together and to this opportunity of sharing and also being together in this focusing way that is such an for me such a dear way of sharing presence so I really want to thank you for being devoted <laughs> to this way mm -hmm. of living also, because it's it's a way yes. of living to make yes. space for this kind of interaction. So having said that, I just invite you to take some pause for setting the stage here and now. And for me, it's it's always helpful that I do this with putting my hand hand on my heart, as you might see that I'm doing. Because just this gesture is for me a very important reminder to really connect to my essence. My essence that I can sense, that I can really um, be aware of its, its living presence inside of me. So this living presence inside of yourself, take your time to connect to that essence in your heart. And to give yourself a heartfelt welcome. And you can also sense if your heart feels like an open space to just being aware of this unconditional loving presence that in you that it's much more and much bigger than what you might think you are. And I always take some time to just be aware that this inner presence is grounded, has its roots in my bodily felt connection with Mother Earth. So that's for me very important to be aware about my grounding my being part of nature. And I also make this connection in the other direction by being aware that I'm part of this immense universe where I don't know what it is, but where, where I can sense that there is my source, my resource, being of loving, of creation, living. So take your time to really feel this being connected to, and, and I make this, um, I don't know the word in English, but it's like, a circle, circle like this and then a circle that goes to the center of the earth and my heart is like the, the edge, the center. And for my heart, I'm deeply in touch with this bodily felt experience of grounding and this in 
infinite <laughs> space. Okay. And then you can sense whether you also can make connection to the people being in this workshop. That also this is a circle, a circle of persons being connected with a loving presence. This is, is for me not just an exercise. This is, is something that's for me very helpful to really remind myself that this is what I always have at hand, <laughs> that's always nearby, that I can connect to this loving presence that I can sense inside me and that I'm part of something much, much bigger than this small human being. So and then I address that, that that's also because I, I really want to emphasize that living forward is is about this never ending continuing movement that never stops. Whatever crisis we are in, whatever difficult situation we are in, whatever the darkness is that we feel stuck. This is for me always, always, always available. And this is for me always my resource to find the light and to, to nourish my hope that whatever happens, something new will come out. And this is where I have this sensitivity for how to find these keys for transformation. And for me, there are several important keys, as you could read also about in, in, in the manuscript I made available. But the most important thing is that you can experience what works for you as your keys. And that you can really sense in your body this transformational power that's yours. It's really yours. <laughs> and very often it's it's just a way of opening up, letting go your old ideas or your old concepts or your expectations of what you think you should happen, letting go of that and receiving the possibility of something new that can come when you are ready for this transformational move. So, of course, I could, I could say a lot to start with, but I trust you could read what I try to express in my manuscript. And what's most important is how this resonates in you and that you feel very welcome by sharing what resonates in you and we might um, develop something more from where you have a 
a question or where you want to just say something about what touched you or what intrigues you or what moved you or whatever. I, I really welcome every one of you to participate in, in our encounter and our exchange. So please. <laughs> so it was very tangible, very tangible when you made this, this circle that goes out above and all the way to the earth. It was mm. beautiful and tangible. Thank you. Mm. And when you say this, Katarina, um, I think it's always about finding a connection that helps you to be aware of this loving presence or this nourishment or this inspiration. And this can come from many sides. This, this can come from deep from the earth, from Mother Nature, by f feeling how you are part of nature and how your body is, is a natural process and not a fact. <laughs> Our bodies are processes, like everything in nature is a process. So the, 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 the connection can come there as something oh, that helps you to, to find some new life mm -hmm. or the connection can come just by how you relate to to your inner sense of being that you can sense that you can let go of can, that you can let go something of your identity that that was so important for you to to feel safe and that you can sense inside that oh when you can let go that old pattern of yourself that, that you can arrive in a deeper layer where you arrive more in your purest inner being. Or it can also come from the connection with another human being, that, that, that this person, uh, the connection with that person brings in like, like a life <laughs> giving uh, connection that, that this just another person being there with you, with, with his or her loving presence, that can be life-changing. And it can come from there where, where you have your connection with the, the, the mystery of life, and, and you can sense, oh, this is beyond everything I could imagine. So these are, are like... I could say very simple, these are four ways <laughs> that that are different ways where you can um, find your specific resource, what helps you in that moment. And also, this can change from situation to situation. But it's, it's, it's important that you remind yourself that you have these resources at your that, is, that they are available for you. That the only thing you have to do is to open up, to receive, and to let the transformation happen. Very often, there is a resistance to the transformation because we, we we hold on to the old pattern. Mm -hmm. And as you spoke of opening up, you also you move back a little bit. So this opening up has a a kind of stepping back quality mm -hmm. to make space for what comes. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it also has something of surrender. S surrender to the new life that tries to come true. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a quality, Katerina, you just modeled that so beautifully, somatically. It, it's a clearing a space. I, I've, I've done a lot of this kind of practice in a context that's from different mm -hmm. practice communities than uh, focusing. So I love, Mia, your language of making this <laughs> for the, for, in, a, in a focusing vocabulary. So there's a clearing a space that's really about, you know, our Western consciousness of how we organize our sense of self to just say, okay, oh yeah, here I am, earth below, sky above. And as, right, as we listen, and you, as you said that, you modeled that so beautifully, oh, something else comes online. And it's a kind of intersubjectivity in which we feel our own sense of ourselves as subject grows deeper. And then I love that you brought in the horizontal and then how we connect with one another has more, <laughs> has more resource in it. If I, if I try, for example, in, in this other ways I've been working, if I try to be helpful from the place of my limited self, I, there's only so much I have available. Whereas if I meet another with this, yeah. Yeah. And and it's so beautiful that you mentioned it's clearing the space and it is more. It's it's also not just clearing the space and opening up, it's also this interactional thing that you uh f welcome interaction that brings something new it, that brings more than, than what you could experience in, in this closed, fixed reality. And, and whatever you, you, you choose as what works for you as an interaction, that depends on the situation. Like, I can choose uh, the weather as as where I interact with with the storm that's going on and and uh, I can choose that to to interact with with the, what's going on in nature I, I can choose many many things but it's not just opening my space but it's also um receiving what I, I'm giving a meaning in, in the moment also. Because, for example, when I, I interact with the storm, the weather, it's not just a fixed idea about what does it mean, storm. <laughs> it, it's, it's, it's this interaction with my experience in the moment where, where the, 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 the meaning is developing. And that's always new. That's never the same as it was yesterday. The same with um, <clears throat> in this interaction with yourself. You, you, there's always more than than what was there yesterday. <laughs> it's always some, somewhat different. So that's also why um, I emphasize. We, we, we tend to think about a situation or as a fact also or, or, or body or, or age we, we tend to think as this is a fact while we aren't facts a situation isn't a fact a situation is always a process and, and in the process is always this sensitivity for, for this developing reality and this this developing meaning please feel free I to love, come in <laughs> <laughs> I love that receive 
breathing is at the heart of being aware of the process of participating in the in the great big process of of evolution of you know uh because we always think of of the part of it as what we do and the the receiving is the receiving and the doing are are one interaction yeah that, that is what i emphasize as this paradoxical qualities in in this deep understanding of paradoxical reality of life there is never this this opposite like there is no opposite between receiving and doing the 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 uh the they are interconnected so and we tend a lot to polarize, <laughs> to to make these different parts. While life doesn't work like that, when you make it separate parts and you polarize it, there, there is no more this flow of energy. The, the flow of energy or living forward always supposes this interaction between these different poles and not polarizing it. May I ask a question? Of course. You're welcome. Thank you. So this seems like it's for people who are already there or almost there, or some version of being there, where you are. What do you mean what by about, there? Okay, who already kind of get it. <laughs> and it's, it, it's sort of like a reinforcement of it with an expansion of it. But many, many people are way far away from it. Yeah. So... Yeah, thank you for it's your. It's a little bit your... like in being in a church and a priest is saying, "We yes. all know about you know Jesus and you know, but ah, what okay. if you're sitting there and you're, oh, no, no, no. Okay. you know, what would you yes. do if somebody is just not there at all?" <laughs> okay, I love that um, reflection that you make. Because for me, it's not about being there and not being there. For me, it's about stages in awareness. Like also literally our body has stages in development. So also our understanding of life is developing our awareness about life. And personally, I try, I can't say I'm always successful in that, but I try to not make this difference of they are there and I am here. I, I just try to be present and and making connection to whatever someone's level of consciousness is or whatever awareness someone is in. And I try to stay out of some kind of judgment in this is better and that's not so good. And I say, I try because, <laughs> of course, um, it's so comfortable to be, in con to, to be in relationship with someone who shares 
a level of awareness that makes the, the, the connection much easier. And at the same time, for me, it's like an invitation. When I, 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 I am in a relationship with someone that has like this focusing, what's that for bullshit? Well, <laughs> for me, it's an invitation to, to connect to where is in that person, in that situation, something I can relate to. And then that is for me this huge invitation of how can I be present with this person, this situation, in a way that where I see some light that I can bring it in without overpowering the, the other person with who too much <laughs> but but really tuning in to to the level of awareness that that the person can connect with and, for and me as a therapist i'm sorry to interrupt i just wanted to say that for me as a therapist i think it would be let's say that i have a teeny bit of light and they their darkness. This is ridiculous binaries, but just heuristically. Um, I think my task would be to really enter their darkness. In other words, I go the distance. I wouldn't say I would really enter their darkness. I would say right. I'm with them in right. their experience with darkness. I'm with them, but I don't right. lose my connection with this inner light that I experience in myself. And, and I see it as my task to take care of not letting, um, not losing my sense of my inner light and and to be with the other person in a way that can be very slowly that that i just give my loving presence that i just help them to 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 support to yeah to be in the darkness and that they know ah, someone is present with me. That's already for me um, a way of, of making connection where the person is. And that's so different from having some kind of judgment like, oh, this person is so in the darkness. <laughs> Um, so that's why I, I, I try to stay out of um, making these differences like these persons don't know about focusing <laughs> um, for me it's more like okay um in this moment, I have something very important that helps me to stay with that person in, in the darkness that that person is in. And that helps me to not get, to not become overwhelmed by the darkness where the person is in. But, <laughs> <laughs> When I take care of myself, I can't live if I'm constantly in 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 companionship of people who have no awareness of focusing. So for my own health, 
I need my soulmates <laughs> in in the focusing world. For my own health, I need them. Did I answer something that you can sense as meaningful for you? Or... Yes. I mean, there's a lot there, obviously. It's not simple. Mm -hmm. I mean, darkness can be a very peaceful, safe cave where the moles and the voles live and you know, there's something about that whole <laughs> binary anyway that is yeah. bogus. But and again, yeah. it's right. not about darkness is bad. Exactly. Then, that's the problem with oversimplifying into concepts. And, and that's <laughs> then again you are making this polarization between dark exactly. and light. It is no polarization. So thank you. And Max, you wanted to say something? Uh, yeah, but I think Monica was, was before me. Oh, Monica. Um, yeah, I, I just, I wanted to respond to Liz, if that's okay. Yeah, she's not frozen, but I don't think she's here. Liz, nod to your head if you can hear us. Well, not let's, let's hold on to that. And Meg, you... Uh, <laughs> yes, I was... Yes. I, was, I was really interested in asking um, about me or you, in your remarks, you talked about staying with yourself, but not going forward so much to not, quote, overwhelm them. And that word overwhelm really surprised me. So what did, it seems like the more I am able on occasion to really tune in, be with somebody and with myself, etc. Um, um, I might make a suggestion that would overwhelm somebody. So I would just back up. By the way, I'm not a therapist. I'm a, I'm a regular citizen. Um, could you say something more about what you mean by the overwhelm? I found that kind of interesting. I found it puzzling, but I'm interested. Yes. I, I I I have a sense that I am overwhelming when I try to bring in too much more than for the person at that moment um, feels all right to take in. And um, I can be overwhelming with, with many things. <laughs> so this is for me um an invitation also to to pose time and time again and in this pose checking whether what i bring in um, if the person can digest it or being aware that i don't bring in too much that <laughs> That's what I call overwhelming. Okay, yeah, thank you. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Makes sense to me. To check, especially checking in with someone, if you've opened, maybe touched, put a toe in the Grand Canyon that they're standing in and they would rather not, they're not ready to look at the vastness of the Grand Canyon. Blah, blah, blah. But anyway, yeah, the check-in. If somebody is looking dubious or... Um, a, a touch of franticness, unease, discomfort shows up. Yeah, back up. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm hearing about overwhelm. If you see they're edgy, anxious, yeah, that makes sense. I love the word uh, evocative because it feels like Focusing is so much about evoking the next the next step for the person, the next communication, the next metaphor. 
And even if it's overwhelming, and one can say something about the overwhelming, that can be a next, a next step. Because it's sort of a next step in, in the interaction of the two of us. Yeah. That's why the pause is so important. That even when it can be overwhelming, when you take a pause, you you open a space for a next step that can come. So the, the pause is this uh, space where the person can process with what you are evoking. Or where you can sense that it's too much and, and then you can take some steps back <laughs> and try to find where the person can connect with. So that that's for me the importance of, of the importance of the pose. Yeah. So let's wait a moment here. <laughs> let's wait. And thank you. Liz, Dorothy, and also Laura. So let's hear from you as well. I'd like to um, say what my thoughts are here, if I if I can put them into words. I'm not sure because I think it comes from a pretty early place. Um, but having grown up, my context is, Maya, that I um, grew up in a um, Christian fundamentalist um, background. Um, and to be a part of that community, um, my uh, take on it in some way was that you had to give up a party yourself to be a part of that community to take on their belief system, um, whether it didn't feel right to you or not. Um, and I don't even know why, but as you were talking earlier, it came up that you focusers have something. You have an answer. I know that's not what you're saying, but this is what came up on this other level, that you have something. And the person, to use Liz's term, the one in a certain kind of darkness, I know there are many meanings of darkness, but a certain somewhat typical meaning of the word darkness um, doesn't have this thing and you have it and the other person doesn't. And so there's a asymmetry here and a have and a have not, right. a lacking in the other. And um, it's amazing to me the the place that I went to, uh, a very, very frightened child that um, it could be focusing, it could be hypnosis, it could be self-psychology, it could be whatever. Um, I just listened to Ken Wilbur. That was like, oh my God, that philosophy was way over the top for me. But but then I began to see something very interesting in it. You know, it could be that, but the knower, the known, it's like putting out the knower and then there's the one who doesn't know enough. So I, I'm just sharing okay. all of that. It's so I really want to um, connect with that. It's not about that this person doesn't have that. It's more that this person doesn't notice it. Mm. So, like, when you are breathing, everyone has this breathing in and breathing out. But 
some people don't notice their breathing in and breathing out. And it's it's the same with um, this focusing thing. Um, everyone has this inner living, this inner life energy. Otherwise, they were that. They were, they were no more living. But it's, 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 it goes on unnoticed. Like, like we also could say, whatever the darkness is someone is living in, there, there is a sparkle of light, but, but it, it, it goes on unnoticed. So what we try to, to, to bring in is, is this opening up to, to notice what's already there in the person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, yeah. Mia. Hi. Uh, I, I just I love what I one... love what you're saying, Dorothy. I just love the unknowing and knowing, um, and it's just a felt sense, an excitement, you know, around what you have said. I don't fully grasp it, but it is something about those that know and don't know. So it's something about the knower, you know. Um, um, so uh, yeah, it's Easter here. <laughs> In Ireland, I'm sure it's Easter somewhere no. else, you know. Um, they're really struck by the symbolism, you know, of the old traditional ways. Um, so there's the, the risen Christ and there's the Easter bunny, you know. And they're so <laughs> completely different, you know. <laughs> so when we're talking, when I'm talking in symbolisms, also I'm in Ireland, so we have the Easter rising, you know, which was, oh. a, we got the Brits out. Um, so there's that sort of double symbol, all the symbolism. So unless I know where someone is coming from, you know, and and uh, last week we were in different time zones by the hour. Where are you based, Mia? Where are you based? You're in Europe as well. Can she hear me? No. Did you? Okay. I'll just leave it at that. I'm just excited by your... Uh, we changed time time zone this this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just want to say um, to Mia that I'm really slowly taking in the idea of just noticing, because when you grow up in a very religious background, mm -hmm. there isn't the sense of noticing where the other person is or any. Um, ph philosophical dogma it doesn't have to be religion. It could be communist. It could be any political, philosophical orientation where the person has the dominance that is um, up for them that comes across. And so, just this idea in that paradigm, one person, the knower, isn't noticing the other. Where so what you're saying, I'm at first I wasn't getting it because then the noticer has the power, but slowly I was taking it in. <laughs> Thank you. And and I I would continue that noticing supposes being aware of your not knowing. When I think that I know it, then I, I get somewhat fixed and I, I, I bring in a hindrance of noticing freshly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's also problematic with every theory or every every belief. If you think that you know it, <laughs> that your theory mm -hmm. is right, that's a real hindrance mm -hmm. in Noticing freshly in the moment. Mm. Yeah, thank you. So, Nati, you wanted to say something. I saw your hand also rising. <laughs> thank you, Mia. It's always mm. such a pleasure to listen to you. <laughs> so, I was thinking you used the word noticing and aware, and 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 it's 
not noticing is so is 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 such a survival strategy <laughs> it's like yeah. when we are children and and we are suffering it's it's better not to be sensitive to many things it's better not to notice not to be aware so not noticing many many times protects us from 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 being overwhelmed from feeling things yeah. that we are not able to cope yes so yes I believe indeed caring thing that yeah. our body our bodies yeah. do for us and then it's so important that you can experience another presence that connects with you that's able to contain what's overwhelming you because you are right that not noticing is a way of, of defending or protecting yourself to what's overwhelming. And especially then, you really need the presence of someone or something that helps you to contain that overwhelming reality. Mm. And, and there you need someone who notice you being overwhelmed. <laughs> yeah. And Laura and then Michael. Thank you. Hi. I'm wondering if we can maybe connect this with the original talking about overwhelmed. Um, I, I notice... Um, that uh, I'm I'm talking to someone and something lands, and then I put a lot more on it, and um, that's my definition of overwhelmed because there's such a um, pleasure, you know, like we made that connection. I could see that I made the point or something like that, and then. Um, and then there's just uh, um, a disconnect, really. I'm like, um, maybe it's like pouring out that Jean Jenlin says, but I'm not sure. Um, but it, it's sort of, maybe it's paradoxical that my joy that, that, that we connected, I want more of that. And then it's too much. Um, So I'm going to pause there instead of mm -hmm. saying a lot. Yeah. Please, yeah. Michael, and then do it. Yes. Michael was going to say something. Yes, I'm very grateful for the quality of the conversation about something that we are discussing that is very subtle and. I believe extremely important. It's something that uh, is quite elusive at the same time, that it's, in fact, it's always already the case. We have nothing to do. It's not about doing, you know, we're, we're not human thinkings or human doings, we're human beings. How much time do we spend in a day to just be who we are? Like I wrote in the chat, in fact, I believe and experience that it's rarely about others. It's about my perception of others and where I stand in my own two shoes when I believe I'm seeing what's out there. I, I bring it back to Jensen's unit model. I see object. I see people with their darkness. I see this. I see that. But I see that from where I stand, where I exist. Am I right now fully enlightened? Am I seeing the world as myself being God, ultimate, which apparently we all are? I think what's interesting about what Mia said in a way, and it's important to see it every way that everybody is seeing it, because it's like little parts, little pieces of of the puzzle, but 
it's an invitation that you know, if I put yellow glasses on my on my eyes, the world becomes yellow. The world has changed. If I change the way I perceive myself in the world, the world changes. So it's rarely about others. It's more about how I'm making myself perceive the world and myself. And I, I'm inside that dilemma because I teach focusing and I just discovered that the I'm teaching from the position of transmitting content rather than being in a process with another living being and considering the other person a little bit like uh, Liz said about how they're experiencing their own place of being aware. What is that? It's it's very difficult mm -hmm. to describe it. And yeah. Mia, you're, mm -hmm. the way you're bringing it is... Um, I'm very grateful for it. I don't know what which word to add because mm -hmm. it, it's bringing us to a very subtle conversation that's really, really important about what I believe Jen Lin was talking about is we are processes, we're moving, we're changing, but there's a part in us that we can feel when the space is cleared that is unmoving, that is unchanging. And apparently that's who we really are. But I myself do not experience that every moment. Um, there's a lot of stuff happening. I'm aging. It's many different things that I experience. So, what you are saying, Michael, that um, helps me to, to give it words in a different metaphor. Like we use a lot the metaphor of clearing the space we can also look at the metaphor of clearing this instrument, yes. like my body with, with my different senses. They, they work, it all works as an instrument. And it, it's also about clearing my instrument. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's what I learned mostly with all the, the physical problems and, and all this very tough situations that that sometimes make me nearly crazy and hopeless. And time and time again, it also worked like clearing my instrument, like um, discovering oh, there is something in, in, in my way of thinking that's quite fixed, or there is something in the way I look to it that I tend to, to view it in, in, from my old way. So mm -hmm. it's, it's always, for me, also a, a process of purification of this... <laughs> body as an instrument and and you are right we, we we can become more and more aware about the different glasses we can put on or the different ways we tend to um, shape reality in a way that it it that our instrument perceives it but the more we we, we clear our instrument or the more we discover about our own shadow sides, the, the purer we can um, become an instrument also to be with another person in, in the most purest way that the essence of that other person can light up. Yeah, it's, it's, so we, we can it's, different metaphors can can help us to approach this. Um, I have the metaphor uh, of, of of the sun. You know, the sun that warms us up is not doing anything. He's uh -huh. not liking us specifically to warm us up. The uh -huh. sun is the sun. Uh -huh. Can I be a sun 
or the world? Can I just beam my presence? Can I just be me and not do anything? It's like, it seems kind of obvious that uh, something out there needs to be changed. But I'm the one having that impression. So from where am I making myself feel that this impression is true? It's, it's, it comes yeah. from my own felt sense and of also me. And when, also, when, when we use a specific metaphor, whatever it is, this, this is something that's very important for me that we stay aware about every metaphor is just a bridge, <laughs> a bridge that helps us to, to develop meaning because we, we, we need the words as, as a bridge from an experience that's difficult to grasp and then the word or the metaphor as, as giving it some expression in the world while at the same time that metaphor or that word does never say it totally so it's 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 only a bridge between yes the experience and how we try to discover meaning in it or mm. to develop meaning mm. and the words and the metaphors or other images we use time and time again they are just only these bridges that bring us to the next step and our next step is the breakout rooms is it Mia and we'll give them the the, the little steps that you prepared for us so we if do that, that? If that feels what uh, is right now then I trust it this is the next step so, Jim would you like to put us in breakout and, rooms and, and I say with, with every exercise <laughs> I prepared an exercise and you I'll put it in the chat for everyone. What I really want to emphasize is when I present an exercise, it's just an invitation. It's not that you should do it like it is written in the exercise. It's that the rule of gentling also feel free to not follow the rule. <laughs> so whatever feels right for you to develop in the breakout rooms, that's the most important. And what I have written in that exercise, you can just use it as some <clears throat> steps you can try, but don't feel like you have to <laughs> follow the steps in the exercise. They are just invitations. What's more important is what's living in you and that you notice that. And if you notice resistance for the the exercise, then you notice your resistance. That, that that's the most important. How many people would you like in a room? I think pairs. Two. I would okay. prefer three myself. It makes a huge difference when you go uh, with three or when you are with two. With two, you can really make a space that each person takes a turn and has the space to develop the what's going on so that's my experience but if someone feels more free and with three persons it's i can't Decided for another. We don't have a lot of time, so a dyad is more time efficient. I, I agree. Welcome back, everyone. We're eager to hear how your breakout room was. Oh, uh, Meg's here. I really like the suggestion. So I focused on a, a problem that has erupted. Er, that I've really just been putting my toe in because it's so overwhelming. Um, and then I followed the suggestion to 
look toward the horizon where it would be better. I'm probably saying that. And I, it was just good to do that and to look where there, where resolution will come eventually. But it's very relaxing to dump some of that. Some of that black energy is gone. That was useful. What you say um, brings me to the importance of allowing what just comes. You could give it a, a, a big word like synchronicity, but you could also understand synchronicity as that you allow what just comes and that what just comes that can be a song in your mind or that can be an animal that just <laughs> comes or, or an object that attracts your attention. So just noticing what presents itself and what you can receive from it. That's for me a very important way also of um, allowing new life or even new grace flow through me by, by just allowing what just comes. And this, this is not always about something big. Uh, sometimes it's for me it's even just a, a stone that that in like an object that's in my room and my attention goes to the stone and i can i can feel all oh, the beauty of that stone and the stone looks like the big images in <laughs> that the hubble telescope makes and and it, it it gives me really like oh i have something i can uh, like a handle so it's it, it's only about what presents itself. You can notice it and you can develop a meaning from it freshly in the moment that offers you a possibility to connect with something of life. And to open up to some new experience, even if it's it's a very small experience, just like, oh, this song, oh, the word in this song touches me, or I feel moved by the rhythm of the song, or whatever. Just, just this is something I I also love to to mention that these small things are also like synchronicity that um, help you to, to be aware of how everything in life is connected and but it, de it depends on how you develop meaning in it those are our beautiful words for us to to end on this morning. Thank you, Mia, so much. Thank you, Mia. That was lovely. Thank yes. You. Thank, Thank you, Mia. It was a beautiful kind of summary. Thank you. We had our poem last week, right, Dorothy? Or... No, no poem today. No poem, <laughs> no poem today. Me. <laughs> was, Mia was the poem. <laughs> Mia, Mia is a, definitely a poem. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mia. Thank you.